we were talking about the immune system um, and sometimes people get a little bit um, anxious about the immune system they find it quite complicated the best piece of advice I can give you and I've said this on Blackboard as well is to make sure you fully understand about all the different types of white blood cells before you try and do this um, we're going to be talking a lot about lymphocytes and different types of lymphocytes and we've already gone over it earlier in the module talking about blood cells um, and the role that the white blood cells play in the immunity so if you're not already really clear about the different types of white blood cells and what each one does I suggest you stop now and go back and look at that and then you can come back to this point when you're clear about that so immune system is about defense it's about um, protecting our bodies from everything else that's in the environment and also within ourselves that doesn't do us any good so what are we defending ourselves against basically we're talking about anything that is non-self so that anything that is not designed to be in our bodies is what we're supposed to our immune system is supposed to protect us against so as any kind of invasion so bacteria virus or fungi and um, also cancer cells and cancer cells are not caused by invasion it's caused by an excessive growth of a particular type of cell in the body um, but our immune system can detect that and try and keep that under control um, parasites so um, anything that's um, living that's invading us like I said anything that's just not what we would normally expect to find in our body we're also going to use the term antigen quite a lot and I've put a definition of antigen there that's come from Oxford dictionaries and you'll find various different ones but they're basically all referring to a substance that induces some kind of immune response in the body um, the antigen itself is something that is displayed on the outside of the non-self item so the antigen is not say for example the bacteria itself the antigen is a protein that's on the cell wall or cell membrane of that bacteria that the body then uses to recognize as not being our own so anything that we're defending against is a pathogen pathogen it causes pathology so it causes disease or illness and we don't want it to be there in our body so we have a few different ways of defending ourselves a few different defense mechanisms we have specific and non-specific specific is immunity what we're going to come on to talk about but we do also have other things that are part of the immune system because they help defend us and um, so the best example of that is intact skin or mucous membrane it's a barrier that stops things getting in so as long as everything is intact and we've not got any cuts or grazes then that protects us a huge amount from the external environment phagocytosis by macrophages so large white blood cells that will just non-specifically go and gobble up anything that it doesn't think should be there it's not initiated by anything in particular these cells just go ahead and do that um, natural antimicrobials that we have within our cell things like probiotics bacteria um, that live within our gut in particular that help get rid of anything that shouldn't be there and also inflammation that in itself is helping defend us um, again non-specifically about anything that shouldn't be there and we're going to talk more about inflammation um, in the next session but specific defense mechanisms are the immunity and these are the things that we're going to talk about today and it's about resistance to specific invaders identifying them and producing something that will help us respond to that antigen not only for that one time but also if we ever encounter that again and immunity is always acquired so what we mean by that is we get it from something else we're not um, made with immunity within us we are born with a certain amount of immunity because it will pass from mother to uh, fetus within the womb however um, it doesn't occur of its own accord if you see what I mean it has to come from somewhere so that's why we say it's acquired so definition there of immunity the ability of an organism to resist a particular infection or toxin by the action of specific antibodies and or 
sensitise white blood cells. So, defence against these invasion things. We have talked about other systems previously, um, particularly blood cells, obviously, but also when we talked about the lymphatic system and its role that it plays in immunity as well in scanning the fluid within the body, passing it through the lymph nodes to um, present whatever might be in that fluid to the lymphocytes. And we're going to talk about that shortly. So immunity is all about lymphocytes. T and B lymphocytes. For each antigen, there is a corresponding lymphocyte, or there will be once the body has been sensitised to it. And we have T lymphocytes and we have B lymphocytes, and like I said, you should be pretty clear about these already. T lymphocytes are programmed to respond to specific antigens, and they're involved in what's called the cell-mediated response. And B lymphocytes are there to produce the antibodies, which are also antigen specific, which will help us in future encounters with that disease or antigen or whatever it is. So they do play quite different roles. This is something that you should be familiar with and you need to have very clear in your head. It's part of a mind map that we have that had all the blood cells on it. <coughs> We're just looking at white blood cells here, and in particular lymphocytes. So the immune response is the way the body reacts to the antigens. And like I said earlier, the antigen itself is the protein that's on the surface of whatever the pathogen is. And it's what the body uses to identify it as non-self. So you can basically think of everything as having like a little flag on the outside or a little name tag. And whatever the flag or the name tag says on the antigen is not something that the body recognises. And therefore it knows it's not our own, so let's get rid of it. And there are two types of immune response. We refer to these as the humoral response and the cell-mediated response. They are different, but they both occur at the same time. Um, in order for us to have the best, most efficient and quickest reaction possible to the antigen as it presents, both for the initial sensitisation and also for future presentation. So let's think about the cell-mediated immune response first. This is about T lymphocytes. And the T lymphocytes are generally produced or resting in the thymus, so that organ that you've already talked about in the endocrine system. Um, and they produce in the thymus and they're released in circulation and they generally hang out in the region of the lymph nodes or lymphatic tissue. So um, things like um, malt or um, tonsillar tissue, that type of thing, pears, patches in the intestine, which are part of the lymphatic system. And these T lymphocytes are sensitised to whatever antigen they are designed for when they first encounter it. And this can be at any point in our life. Now, most of the time we encounter antigens for the first time when we're babies and young children, because we encounter everything for the first time at that point in our life. And they can be encountered in two ways. They can either come across the actual antigen itself, because it's in the lymph, that's flowing through the lymph nodes or the um, lymphatic tissue where they are um, residing at that moment in time. Or they can also be encountered by something called an antigen presenting cell. So what these are, these are macrophages that have spotted something that it didn't recognise, so it gobbled it up, it has phagocytosed that to get rid of it, but it has taken with whatever antigen was on the outside of whatever its phagocytosed and put it on the outside of its cell, so that although the T lymphocytes haven't had the opportunity to meet that antigen specifically, they're going to come across this macrophage that's presenting it, and they can still be sensitised. And that's really the ideal situation, because the body hasn't had to have a reaction to the antigen in order for it to be sensitised to it. So we haven't got ill because we didn't recognise that. The macrophage has got rid of it straight away, but it's then going to present it to the lymphocytes for sensitisation, so that if we come across it again, we won't get ill. 
in future um, situations. So, like I say, they're sensitised on first um, on first meeting of this antigen, and then they go through a process of what we call clonal expansion. And this is when your generic generic T lymphocyte splits into one of its four categories. Think back to that um, flowchart or mind map we just looked at, because the T lymphocyte can then move on to being a memory cell, a killer cell, a helper cell. Um, or a T suppressor cell, that should say. My apologies, I've just realised I've got memory twice. So, memory killer, helper, or suppressor. We've talked previously about what those different cells do, so I'm not going to dwell on it at this moment in time. So, I'm going to just try to show in a diagrammatic representation of what I was talking about here. This is what we call the antigen presenting cell. So, this is the big macrophage that's come across the antigen. And it has engulfed it and destroyed it. And it's taken the protein on the outside and displayed it on its own cell membrane. So the T lymphocytes in the lymphatic tissue can recognise there's my antigen. And from there, they're going to split up into all these different categories suppressor, helper, memory, and killer, or cytotoxic is another name for them. That diagram also talks about what they do. It's in Ross and Wilson, as you can see on page three or one. Cytokines play a really important role in the cell mediated response. And cytokines are little protein packages, little chemical mediators. Whenever you've got an antigen, particularly if it's a diffuse area of that, so say for example, um, you've got a break in the skin. And you're getting quite a lot of influx of um, antigens. You need lots of lymphocytes in that area, but the lymphocytes don't naturally hang out there because they're um, in the lymph nodes. So cytokines are released by T helper cells. So once it's been sensitised and the clonal expansion has produced the four different types, the helper cells serve the function of trying to get more cells to the area to get rid of the antigen. And they do this by producing cytokines. Tiny little chemical messengers that are released from the area go to where the T lymphocytes are, and the B lymphocytes for that matter, and attract them to the area. So you get influx. They're really important with the next for initiating and prolonging the inflammatory process. Inflammation is the body's way of dealing with the problem. You get an influx of cells and blood and fluids to the area, and cytokines are one of the ways in which um, the inflammatory process is provoked. So they're released by the T helper cells. It's all about trying to get as much done in a shorter period of time. So we've got rapid phagocytosis, and rapid destruction of the problem, and therefore less tissue damage occurring. So the other response is the humoral immune response, and this is to do with B lymphocytes. So B lymphocytes don't travel around um, the body in general circulation. They are fixed in the lymphatic tissue, in the lymphoid tissue, and they work in association with the T cells, we call that T B lymphocyte cooperation. So they don't have to be um, sensitized by the antigen initially. We can rely on the T lymphocytes to do that, pass on the information to the B lymphocytes. So the B lymphocytes are already sensitized and ready to go. Once they've been detected their antigen, their already sensitised to, then the clonal expansion occurs, and they just have the two, they've got the plasma cells and the memory cells. Again, we talked about this before, as to what they do. Memory cells are there for future occurrence, and the plasma cells are the ones that produce the antibodies, and the antibodies are the key to the humoral immune response. So antigens are not cells themselves, antibodies, sorry, antibodies are not cells themselves. 
they are little protein packages produced by the bee plasma cell. And what they do is they bind to the antigens to label them for other defence cells to deal with. So it's kind of like sticking a big flashing light on this antigen. So it's really easy for the T killer cells and also the macrophages to know I need to get rid of this. They don't need to think about it, they can just go straight in. So yeah, the, the cells already, the invaders already got an antigen on it, like a tiny little flag, but these antibodies will bind to the antigen and make it really obvious that this is a problem. They serve a couple of other things. They also help neutralise the bacterial toxins and they activate something called complement. And complement is something I want you to read a little bit more about. It's part of the non-specific immune response. So um, it basically is a whole series of proteins, like a cascade similar to what we talked about when we talked about coagulation, the coagulation cascade, a series of proteins that are already found in the blood but when they are activated in the presence of antibodies, they all come together to directly destroy the antigen itself. So without actually needing any cell activity, because the antigen isn't the antibody isn't a cell, the antigen isn't a cell, and nor is complement. It's doing exactly what the name suggests, it's complementing the specific immune system responses that we've already talked about, whether that be cell mutated or humoral, but it only occurs in the presence of antibodies. So antibodies are really, really important. They're also important in lifelong immunity, because once we have antibodies, we're going to keep those antibodies for the rest of our lives. And that's why we can say things like childhood illnesses such as chickenpox. Most people will only get chickenpox once. It's not because they're only exposed to it once, of course they're not. When kids are at school, they, most of the kids had chickenpox all the time, but they only get it that first time because that first time they didn't have any antibodies because they hadn't come across it before. Whereas future times, they've got antibodies floating around in their blood that the body produced the last time they were exposed to it. And therefore, straight away, as soon as that virus enters the body, it, the antibodies bind to it, and before it's had time to take hold and cause the illness, it's dealt with it. So there's multiple different types of antibodies um, that serve different purposes, and we refer to them as Ig something. That's because the other name for antibody is immunoglobulin. And again, let's go back to the blood lecture. So we talked about plasma. And one of the things in plasma was proteins, and one of those was immunoglobulins, which are antibodies. So we have IgA. Uh, we find that in body secretions such as saliva. And what they're designed to do is to catch things as they're entering the body. So we have secretions in areas where it's, uh, there's an entrance to the tissues. So in our mouth, in our nose, um, in the region of our anus and our genitals to try and stop stuff getting in and that's where you'll find IgA antibodies. Um, IgD um, produced by the B cells as we know um, and they enable the antibodies to stick to the antigens. Uh, we've got IgE which is involved with the inflammatory response. IgG is the most common antibody. We have loads of them and they will work on various different um, antigens, different pathogens that we've been sensitised to. And IgM is one of the ones that's involved with complement. So, I mean, there's loads more than that. I've just given you a list of the, um, the most common and most relevant ones. But in particular, IgA is relevant to us with it being found in saliva. 